Rod, what's going on, man? It's Nesta from the Boxing Voice. Hey, how you doing? All right. Well, I'm joined here alongside my co-host, Victor Salazar, and uh, we want to thank you, of course, for coming on and uh, giving us the opportunity to interview live here on the radio. And uh, we're ready to get this started, brother. Cool. All right. Well, got a little something for you. Now, we know that you're taking a lot of shit for this fight Uh, People are not happy Uh, Teddy Atlas went on a a rant, I guess to say the least, on on ESPN uh, Basically questioning your your ranking in the sanctioning body Questioning... Basically, uh, you know, your worthiness to be taking on the lineal champion at your at, at the 140-pound division. Um, right. I'm pretty sure you got texts and things about Teddy ranting. Uh, what went through your mind when you finally got to watch the playback? No, I watched it live. Um, I was watching the fights that night. Uh, it, you know, what are you going to do? I mean... Like he said on there, you know, only in boxing can this you get away with this kind of stuff. So he was saying, you, you know, in any other sport, you know, they hold a higher standard and blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, in college football, the first first three, four weeks of college football, you got Michigan playing Appalachian State. You got teams that are in the top ten playing teams you never heard of before. And a lot of times there's upsets. So, I mean, I'm not sure if that was his point. But only in boxing. Can you be considered an expert analyst with no college degree and never played the sport that you're an analyst in? Only in boxing. (laughs) Pretty true, pretty true. Now, as far as this fight goes, I mean, this is basically your rocky moment, am I right? Right. No, absolutely. Like, like I get all the backlash. I, I understand. Like, I get it. You know what I mean? But you got to give somebody a chance at some point. Um, you know, I get the fans, like all the fans that are hating on the fight or saying this is bullshit, this and that. I get the excuses. Uh, the thing with the Teddy Atlas thing that I didn't get is the, you know, if you want to make an excuse, me being unranked um, really isn't a valid excuse because if you, I mean, obviously you guys know boxing, you're on, you're on here, you follow it, you, you're fans. So, uh, the way it works, I fought Emmanuel Lucero in February last year, and I fought him for a vacant regional title with the WBA. So when you do that, I fought him in February. I'm not going to get ranked in March. They got to have meetings. They got to figure out who they're going to take out, who they're going to put in, how they're going to move people around. It takes a couple months. It's always a couple months behind. So I fought him in February. I didn't get in in March. I didn't get in in April. I got in in May. I came in at number 15. Um, I fought Alexei Colado for a BC belt in April. I'm not going to get in the rankings in March, or I'm not going to get in in, in uh, May. I'm not going to get in in June. I'm going to get in in July. You know what I mean? After they have their meetings, after all, so, and he knows this. I hope he knows. Maybe he doesn't know. I mean, like I said, I don't even know if he graduated high school. He might not know. But uh, that's just the way it is. And, and boxing experts know that. So when you're going to get on TV and say things like this kid is in a hometown, he's not even a household name in his own household. Now you're just making personal digs, and, and you're making it personal and. And I don't have time for that. If you're if you're if you're an expert, you should be held to a higher standard. Like the fans, any fans saying, you know, I want to see Herrera, or I don't think this kid, this kid's a bomb, anything. I, that's fine. You know, I did ten years in the military, so you can have the right to say whatever you want to say as a fan. But if it's your job and you're a professional, you, you should be held to a higher standard. I just thought it was unprofessional for for him to say that. And uh, as far as getting the fight, man, I'm excited. I, who wouldn't be excited? I mean, it's the opportunity of a lifetime. I, I can't. I'm not. What am I supposed to do? You know what? Teddy Atlas and these experts are going to be really mad. I'm going to have to decline this. <laughs> I'm going to have to decline this fight. I'm sorry. You know, take keep your money. Uh, get me a fight that you know people won't get mad about. Uh, nobody's going to say that. You better not say that shit. I tell you that. Um, right. But you can't. I'm glad that you understand the criticism because I mean, Emmanuel Luciero is a guy that uh, one of my 
top prospects. I, I really, you know, a guy that I follow a lot. His name is uh, Joel Diaz. Not to be confused with right. Joseph Diaz, the Olympian. He fought Emmanuel Luciero, but at 130 pounds, and Joseph Diaz has about 13 fights right now. Guillermo Sanchez is also a guy that Joseph uh, Joel Diaz fought and beat. And, uh, again, he only has about 12 fights right now, and he's a 130-pounder. You were a 135-pounder, or were you campaigning at both divisions? What do you mean, 30 and 35 or 35 and 40? No, 30 and 35, because this is going to be your first fight at 40, correct? I mean, I fought, no, I fought, I fought uh, Ricardo Alvarez at 140 in the main event on Show Extreme on the Broner Maidana undercard for the WBC belt when uh, Alvarez was ranked 13 by the BC. Uh, now, I was live at that fight, I, I, um, and I seen you I, I, win that fight. Right. I remember Paul Spadafora being in your corner and the guy from Dexter, but um, right. I thought that that fight was at 135 because that fight was supposed to be a buildup for the Omar Figueroa title shot, correct? It it was, but uh, see, it was a 140-pound fight. It was for the I. Um, it was for the WBC America's light waterweight title. As a matter of fact, he wasn't even eligible because he came in two pounds overweight. He actually weighed, I believe, 142. They had to pay me. Nice. nice. Okay, so you fought basically all around. So you don't think... Well, and another thing that I do know is that in the amateurs, I think you fought as high as 152 pounds. So the weight difference or move up in weight isn't going to affect you, is it? No, it really won't. Like, I... Like to make thir- I could probably make 130. I could make 35. You know what I mean? But to do that, man, I I can't touch. I can't do a push up or a pull up. And I really got to watch the diet. And I really got to do everything the right way. And it's a lot of cardio. And I burn muscle off to do it. I mean, I wrestled since I was little, so I'm used to being able to make any kind of weight. You know what I mean? But in reality, like at 140, I'm able to, you know, do some of my functional exercises, do do some different routines, do some strength and conditioning stuff, and I'm able to. Uh, you know, keep that muscle on rather than having to burn the muscle off to get to the lighter weight. So I'm happy. I'm happy with it at 140. Now, as of late, we've been having a lot of upsets. Um, So I guess, you know, the boxing gods are looking in your favor because, you know, we had Algeria not too long ago beat Ruslan on HBO and become a champion, a guy in your division now since you're campaigning at 140 versus Danny Garcia. Uh, we also had Ruslan himself beat Mike Alvarado, who was considered to be a better boxer than Ruslan. And, and you know, at one point, Ruslan was considered an ESPN fighter. So the same stick that people are giving you, they've given everybody. Um, how do you yeah, exactly, handle exactly. it? Uh, it's just another fight, man. I mean, it's a bigger fight, but... Uh... It's actually easier because now all I have to focus on is boxing. Like every other fight, I, you know, I still have a kid and a, and a wife that I have to do stuff with. So this fight here is giving me the opportunity to just go away to camp and just focus 100%. And I understand that people are going to talk. I mean, they, it's funny because the last fight they were like, oh, he's fighting Mauricio Herrera. He's lost two of his last four. This is terrible. Herrera gives him a great fight. Now they're like, oh, it's terrible. He's fighting Salka. He should rematch Herrera. You know what I mean? And and that's why, I mean, that's the great thing people can talk. It's great that people are talking. I mean, I'm happy that they're even talking about it. Hopefully hopefully they watch the fight. But it's the Algeria thing, man, I don't know what you mean in beating them because, I mean, if you listen to Teddy Atlas, Algeria didn't win that fight. So, you yeah, know, well, there's that too. I, mean, I thought he won the fight. But I thought he won the fight too. I thought he won that fight. Listen, Teddy doesn't always pick them right. He doesn't always pick them right. And, uh, you know, it is what it is. That's his job to 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 be the the colorful guy out of that team. So he's got to go a little bit over the top. That's his, that's been his thing all the time. But um, right, Vic, right, you got something right. for the Lightning Man over here? You're on mute. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Lightning Rod Salka. Uh, I guess the backlash isn't on you because if we're in your position. Guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna take the fight. I, I guess more right, of the owners right. is, is what the fans are saying. They're basically calling out Danny Garcia. They're calling out Showtime for televising the fight. Like I said, if I'm you, I'm taking the fight. There's there's no way around it. But that being said, right. you watched the Herrera fight. Did you score the Herrera fight for Herrera against Danny Garcia? I I didn't. 
I didn't have him. I mean, it was a close fight. I, you know, it was a, it was a close fight, but I mean, I could definitely see you giving it to Herrera. I mean, he was boxing, he was moving around and stuff, but I, he just wasn't landing any any kind. Probably the same problem I'm gonna have with announcers and stuff is the, is the same kind of thing. Like like if the fight's going good, maybe I'm getting off and I'm moving good, but every time he throws a punch, they're gonna be saying, you know, well, Salk is landing more, doing more like Herrera, but. When when Garcia lands, it's going to have more of an effect. Whether it is or not, that usually tends to sway the judges. You know what I mean? The power shots and stuff like that. And I believe Garcia landed more power shots in the fight. I think he he landed less punches overall, but I'm pretty sure he landed more power shots. I mean, it was a really close fight. I mean, if you gave it to Herrera, you're not going to hear any complaints. You would you'd probably hear the same kind of complaints like, oh, I can't believe they didn't give it to Garcia because you know he was the champion. But then Garcia gets the decision. You're going to have it the other way around where. You know, he only got it because he was in Puerto Rico, and, you know, they robbed Herrera of it. I mean, that's going to happen in the sport anytime you have any kind of fights like that. You know what I mean? That are close. You're going to always have – I mean, my fight, was, my fight with Alvarez, it was like, you know, kind of – and everybody I talked to thought I, thought I lost or thought I won the fight. You know what I mean? I didn't get the decision. So it's not always a bad thing for the fighters. Like, I know I was devastated when I didn't get the decision. I couldn't believe it. You know what I mean? But – uh, actually, Paulie Melanogi came back to me and talked to me after and was like, listen, man, this stuff happens. It's a sport. It's going to happen. You can't let it get you down. Something's going to come out of this for you. You know what I mean? They're not just going to let you walk away and, and fade off because you got screwed. And, that, and the same thing with Herrera. I mean, he's fighting. Now he's going to fight Yohan Perez, who's the, you know, the mandatory. I think he's the number one guy. And, yeah, he's not fighting Garcia, but he wins that fight. He's right back in the mix. You know what I mean? People are talking about you. That, that's all you need. You need to be on TV, and you need people talking about you. And whenever the spotlights are on you, you need to be able to perform. And the reason I bring that up, because you are fighting in his, you know, second home or third home or whatever you want to call it at the Barclays. And for a guy with three KOs, you know, a lot of people aren't going to expect you to knock the dude out. And if you outbox him, I mean, how do you expect to get a decision in Brooklyn? I mean, second, third home. I, I don't. I mean, I don't know. You know, judges are going to do what judges are going to do. I can't. I can't worry about that. I can't change my style because a judge might screw me because I'm not doing something that uh, they want to see. Like, uh, I'm just going to go in there and do what, what I feel comfortable doing and doing what I always do. And every fight, and every these last couple fights, I'm going to do just that. If he comes out and the judge catches me or starts doing something, I'll change it up. It's not. Like, I mean, I only have three knockouts. I, I understand all that. And, like, the, the thing is, is I don't – I move around so much, I'm never sitting down on shots, hardly ever. Like, when I choose to sit down on shots, I can't hurt you. I don't know if you've seen the last fight. I mean, he was a smaller – a 30-pounder. 30, a 30 but, I mean, a short little left hook, I decided to make a fist and sit down on, and, I, and, and he went down. You know what I mean? So, it can – and I'm not saying I need to do that to Garcia, drop him or get him out. But if I'm hitting him with shots that are keeping him honest, that's going to make my life a lot easier as a boxer. You know what I mean? I don't have to knock him out. I just If I can sting him or if I can catch him with shots when he's coming in to make him think twice, that's all I need to do. Now, this isn't to say that, you know, they are underestimating you, but last time with the Herrera fight, you know, usually you hear Angel Garcia, usually you hear him doing this, you hear him doing that, and they didn't do that, you know, to Herrera. It doesn't seem like they're doing it to you. I mean, is that in the back of your mind that, you know what, they may not be taking me serious? I think the opposite. I think all the crap that he's taken, all the flack he's taken over this fight and off of the Herrera fight, I think he's going to be training harder than he than he ever has. If he did get complacent, maybe in the, leading up to the Herrera fight, it kind of came to a head, I think it'll be the opposite in this fight. I think he's going to come with a, a major point to prove. Because, I mean, if you look at it, if you look at it uh, from a, from a, boxing expert or a, or a fan's point of view. I mean, the only way he doesn't lose in the public perception of things is if he gets me out of there quick. And he still doesn't win if he does that because everybody's made this to be such a big blowout of a fight anyway. So even if he does that, he doesn't win. That's the only way he doesn't lose. Anything else happens, he loses in the public eye. So, you know, I think he's taking it really personal. I mean, he's fought a lot of tough guys. He's fought a lot of tough fights. He's, I mean, he's fought a lot of great fighters, and now he's catching all kind of crap for this, which is expected. I mean, I get it, but uh, I think I think he's taking it personal. So I think he's going to come. I think he's going to be the best Danny Garcia since he since he fought for the title. And now my last question. I obviously know, you know, we were there in Texas. We've seen Spadafore in your corner. Uh 
We knew for a fact that Spider Four wanted the Danny Garcia. I mean, is he supporting you? I mean, how, how's that conversation going now that you got the Danny Garcia fight that he wanted last year? Dude, he he was he couldn't have been. There wasn't anybody on the planet happier for me. You know what I mean? I mean, he's like he's like a brother. He's like my brother. You know, I mean, I've known him for since I started boxing. So I mean, he was he was so excited, like genuinely jumping up in the air, couldn't believe it, excited. Like a little kid, you know what I mean. He can't, he can't wait for the fight. He's excited as heck can be. But, I, but uh, I see what you're talking. About. I mean, he's fighting tomorrow. I'm going to his fight tomorrow night in Pittsburgh. He's actually fighting. So I was just with him today. Hey Rod, so um, you know, we know that you've been on Showbox. We know that you was on the Bruno Madonna undercard. But for guys that haven't seen you. Uh, you know, at least Algeria had the opportunity with ESPN kind of showcasing him and having the cameras follow him. Then HBO, you know, they did their little cameras following him as well. So the casual fan was able to be introduced to Algeria. So introduce yourself to those, you know, many people that don't know you. Hey man, I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to make it like everybody else is. I don't, I don't, I'm, I was happy as could be for Algeria. I'm happy for any fighter that makes it and does any and, and can do anything. You know, more power to anybody that's, that's moving forward. And uh, I'm just a hard, hard-working kid who's been grinding away at this sport in the shadows uh, since I started in 2007. And you know, that's what I continued to do until I got an opportunity with Golden Boy. And I mean, I was doing all kind of stuff. I was in the military for 10 years. Um, I was in college. You know what I mean? I, I was. Uh, doing all kind of other stuff. I, I have a wife and a, and a baby, you know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a regular, hard-working guy with a regular life and a regular family who's trying to do something exceptional. So before this fight, you were not a full-time fighter? Like that wasn't your day job to get up and run and hit the gym? You had a day job as well? Uh, yeah, for a while. I mean, I was working in an environmental company, and then I started – I took a job at a boxing gym, like, running the classes, like, running the gym for a guy for a little while, you know, because it was a lot easier to get off when I had fights or take time off, like, a couple weeks out at least from a fight. And then, uh, you know, these last couple fights on Showtime, yeah, well, I was definitely not just full-time boxing living in a boxing camp like I like I am now. And I, and I had other a lot of other issues, too, uh, in the last couple fights. So a few deaths in the family. I mean, my baby was born, stuff like that. So, you know, it's been, it was a, it was a hectic time, and now everything is, you know, calm down. I'm living at the camp, spending every night at the camp, waking up, doing the running and, the, and everything like you're supposed to do. So you should be able I should be bigger, better, stronger, and faster than I, than I have been in any other fight up to this point. So now talk to us a little bit about training with Paul, because Paul is a phenomenal boxer. Um, you know, he definitely is a boxer's boxer. Uh, what have you picked up? From working with Paul, uh, just that you know what I mean. Uh, work trying to work off angles. I mean, I do things different, but the same as him. Like he was, he was a lot more fluid and smooth, stepping around people and moving. He was a southpaw, so you know it was a little. If you're fighting a righty as a southpaw, it's like easier to do that. I'm more, you know, a lot of quick jerky movements, a lot of feints, a lot of in and out, uh, side to side kind of stuff with the up and down and the head movements and the flip game and the in the catch and encounter and stuff, you know, is is been huge for Paul. Now I know my co host kinda alluded to that a little bit, but um, you know, the lack of power punching that you have, like the lack of power always presents a, a problem for judging. Like, we've seen it in the Trout fight versus Canelo, Herrera Dar- Garcia, Malinaji Broner. It, the judges always tend not to give the lighter puncher the credit that he deserves for, for punches landed. So how do you combat that when you know that not only are you going against Danny, but you're going against, you know, a style that the judges love to see? Uh, I just got to tighten it up. I got to tighten it up defensively. I can't get, I can't have the punch that close. You know what I mean? I can't have him landing, uh, 20 more percent of his power shot. I can't, I can't have that. I have to beat him to the punch. I have to be first. 
have to be last in the combinations and the exchanges. And, uh, you know, use my defense to set up my offense. And, um, I mean, that's really it. There's nothing I can do. If the judges are going to sit there and think he's landing the harder shots, I, I always like to try to, you know, I don't even know what that means. I mean, the harder shots, like if, if I land a shot and you land a shot and neither of us buckle and neither of us really flinch, then is there really a difference? You know what I mean? Like maybe later in the fight you might see a difference, but even in my fights that I fought, I mean, Alvarez was a, a lot bigger guy than me. He came in really big the, the day of the, the fight. I mean, he caught me with shots I never once even felt. That was the best I felt the day after a fight, and I couldn't even tell you how long. But the whole time the commentators were like, well, Alvarez is landing the bigger shots. So I'm like, well, my knees aren't even, no, nothing's happening to me. What, why are they thinking that this, because he's flat-footed when he's throwing them or because he's grunting when he's, when he's punching? You know what I mean? It, it, there's nothing I can do. It's a, it's a subjective sport, and the judges are going to do what the judges are going to do. I, I'm not going to let that affect how I'm going to fight. You know what I mean? But, it, but that being said, I, I do have to come out and be first with him, and I do have to be last out of the combinations. If I'm first and he counters, i got to come right back. I can't. But I can't sit there and get greedy with him either, because you know, I mean, he loves to punch when you punch, and he and he can and he can punch. So you got to be smart about it, but and you got to pick spots to take chances. But uh, I just got to let my hands go and and have the punch stats and the judges seeing that you know this kid's just controlling the action and dictating the pace of the fight. Now I got two last two questions for you before we let you go. Uh, the first one. I guess, where did you get the name Lightning? I mean, it sounds obvious because your first name is Rod, but is it just that simple? Or do you, you know, did someone consider you fast so they pegged you with Lightning and it went well with Rod? How did how the nickname come about? I, I can't even remember. I think it's since I started, pretty much. Like, I was... I was fast and everything, but it kind of, like, when I first started Boston, I, I wasn't really this style. I was more just a tough come forward guy. You know, I was a wrestler before. Um, and a lightning rod, actually, what it is, is, you know, it absorbs the shock of the lightning to protect the building and, you know, it still stays there after you get hit. So, I guess, actually, it would be like, you know, saying that you could take a shot, but that's not really why, that's not really why I got it. You know what I mean? Like, I was thinking, it's funny, because I was just thinking about this the other day. I'm like, well, a lightning rod, really... <laughs> if you think about it, it's meant to take the shock of the lightning and, and absorb it and still and still be there when it's done. But no, it was it was more you know because uh, of the speed thing. But um, you know, a play on the name too. I probably wouldn't have been called Lightning if my first name wasn't Rod, just because it was more of a play on words, you know. All right, all right. So uh, I guess my last question is, why do you think they chose you? I don't know why they do what they do. All, all, all I know is uh, I got the fight. You know what I mean? They could, who knows? Like I'm not sure if Danny's with Golden Boy. I think he's with Golden Boy still. So I mean, I'm with Golden Boy, so it makes the fight a lot easier to make happen. You know what I mean? I had fought on Showtime twice, so the Showtime people knew me. I mean, I just fought there in December and April, and you know what I mean? So they knew me, so maybe it just made sense for them. You know what I mean? And for Golden Boy rather than maybe – Given the fight to somebody, you know, out of the stable or out, or in the different promoters, you know, you know how that stuff goes. I mean, I I leave that stuff to those guys. I'm not I'm not gonna. I don't even want to know why. Just all I wanted to know was is the, that I had the contract and I signed it and the fight was announced. That's all I wanted to know. Well, uh, Rod, we uh, in the beginning of the show, we said that boxing was built on moments like these, you know, uh, the underdog. This is what boxing is about, that Rocky story, Cinderella Man. And uh, you got your opportunity, so we wish you the best. I won't lie to you because uh, we get a lot of people that listen to this show and they'll give me shit on Twitter. I am a huge Danny Garcia fan, so I'm just going to say it right now. But uh, I am still wishing you the best in this fight because, again, this is your moment. This is your opportunity to basically create your legacy. So, um, you know, come that fight. We wish you the best, and we thank you again for coming on the show. And if you uh, want to take this time to give out any social media, maybe Facebook or Twitter, so uh, our listeners that aren't following you can follow you and uh, get a little closer to your career. And we'd love to have you back on soon. Right. Absolutely, man. I'd love to be back on. I'm just... I mean, I'm on Twitter at LightningRod00, 
Um, I mean, obviously, I just have a, I don't have a, any type of fan page or anything like that on Facebook. You can just look me up under my name uh, and send me a friend request on there. Uh, but other than that, man, I really appreciate you guys calling, taking the time to talk to me. And uh, maybe after August 9th, you'll be a, a Rod Salka fan, too. Yeah, brother, we just want you to make it a good fight, man. Uh, the beginning of this year hasn't been the best. We're looking for the second half to be explosive, and uh, we hope you're part of that. Me too, man, me too. Thanks, Thanks for including me on your show. All right, thank you.